So we want to solve rational inequalities. We have this one, x plus 5 divided by x minus 5 minus x minus 5 divided by x plus 5 that's smaller than or equal to 0. All right, in order to solve this, we need a game plan, a game plan. <coughs> a game plan. First, you want to find the domain restrictions. That's going to give you the bad zeros. Two, you're going to want to get one fraction. Three, you want zeros of the numerator and zeros of the denominator. That's going to get you your critical values. Four, you want to put those critical values on a number line. Five, you want to test the intervals of the fully factored form. Six, you want to choose the appropriate values or intervals. Get started. One, we want to find the domain restrictions. You can never divide by zero. You can never divide by zero. You can never divide by zero. So, the domain that says that x cannot equal 5 because it would make this denominator 0 or minus 5 because that would make this denominator 0 and those are the bad zeros they'll come up later next we want to get one fraction if we're going to get one fraction, we need to get a common denominator. And the common denominator of all my denominators, if I had one, CDs, it's going to be x plus 5 and x minus 5. That's not divided. That's multiplication. I'm just out of room. So we go and we do that. I need to multiply this guy by and x plus 5. I can't do the denominator without also doing the numerator. That's an x plus 5. Alright, and on this one, that's an x minus 5 because I need that to complete my common denominator and that's an x minus 5. Alright, good stuff. So now what do we have? x plus 5 times x plus 5 is x plus 5 squared and then minus x minus 5 squared for the same reasons and that's all over our common denominator of x plus 5 x minus 5 okay let me multiply out that numerator and when I do I'm gonna use dot and dot dot so this is an x squared plus this one times that one double it 10 x plus 25 and that's going to be minus this entire quantity now I'm multiplying this guy out here see and that's going to be an x squared minus 10 x plus 25 and that's all over my common denominator of x plus 5 x minus 5. I want to simplify the numerator. I'm going to leave the denominator factored. When I simplify the numerator, I go oot, 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 and look how fortunate we are on this problem. I'm going to have a minus x squared. Uh, uh. Then I'm going to have a plus 10x, so that's going to give me 20x. Oops. And then, uh, uh, the minus 25 and the plus 25, they cancel. Those are additive inverses. The number that when multi added to the number, the product is none. And that's going to be all over the common denominator of x plus 5, x minus 5. And there I go. I now have one fraction. That's where. That's uh, step two one fraction. Now we want to get zeros of the numerator and zeros of the denominator. Those are going to be our critical value. So I go and I ask the numerator 20x where are you zero? I divide both sides by 20. Uh, uh. And x turns out to be 
zero. That's my good zero. Now let's look for our bad zeros. Our bad zeros happen when the denominator is equal to zero. So we have x plus 5 times x minus 5. Where are you equal to zero? That happens when x is equal to plus and minus 5. Those were your domain restrictions earlier, and those are going to give you your bad zeros. So now we go and we put them on a number line. This is step 4. In step 4, we have, boom, minus 5. We have, boom, plus 5. And we have our one good zero here at 0. We're testing that interval in where? We're testing it right here in 20 x divided by x plus 5 x minus 5 and I need to test a value to the left of minus 5 to the left of minus 5 is like minus 10 then I go and I put it in my fully factored form when I put minus 10 in my numerator here I'm gonna get a minus value And then, when I put minus 10 in my denominator factor here, that's going to get me a minus, because minus 10 plus 5 is a minus 5. I'm not concerned about the actual retail value of the function. I'm worried about its signage. So I put a minus 10 here, and that gives me minus 15, which is still minus. So now I have to ask myself the question. A minus divided by a minus times another minus is going to be minus. Because three wrongs is still wrong. Now I want to test something in between minus 5 and 0. In between minus 5 and 0 is minus 1. So when I put minus 1 in my numerator here, I'm going to get a minus. When I put minus 1 in my denominator here, minus 1 plus 5 is a positive 4, which gives me a positive number in that factor. Now, I go and I put a minus 1 in here. Minus 1 minus 5 is a minus 6, which is minus. So a minus divided by a plus times a minus, that's two minuses. That's going to give me a plus, meaning for my function. All right. Now I write, to the right of 0, I need to test a value, maybe 1. So I go and I throw 1 up in my numerator. So when I put 1 in my numerator, that's going to make my value positive. It's a positive 20. When I put 1 in my denominator, that's going to get a 6, which is positive. And then when I put a 1 in this factor, that's a minus 4, which is negative. So a positive divided by a positive times a negative, that's going to be negative in there. <coughs> All right. To the right of 5, like a million. So I put a million in here, and I have 20 million, which is still positive. So that's why I have the positive value here. So I put a million down here. That's going to be a million five. A million five is positive, and that's why I have that positive right there. And then I put a million right here, and that's um, just a little less than a million, but it's still positive. So a positive divided by two positives is positive. Now. I need to choose the appropriate, because that's the last step. How do I find out what's appropriate? Well, I take my fully factored form. Bam. And my fully factored form was 20x divided by uh, x minus 5 times an x plus 5. But this... rational expression is the same as this 
rational expression. So, I still want that unequal to zero. Now you have to ask yourself, which numbers are smaller than zero? The positive numbers or the negative numbers? The negative numbers are smaller than zero, because that's what we're looking for. We want to know where this is smaller than zero. Which brings us to this. Which numbers were smaller than zero? The negative numbers were smaller than zero. And we need to write that up in interval notation. If we're doing an interval notation, this is minus infinity all the way to minus 5. We're going to onion that up with 0 to 5. Now let's discuss endpoints. I have, I have, I have one, two bad endpoints. Why are those bad endpoints? Because there are domain restrictions. X can't be 5 and minus 5. And that's why I can't include them in my solution set. It's round on 5. It's round on minus 5. Because you can never divide by 0. And it's always round on infinity. Now, let's talk about 0. Because this is in or equals 2... That's this part right here. That means I can include my good zero. This one. And I'll do that now. And there we go. That's my solution in interval notation. Box and flower.